Hey there, after testing out the performance of the new AMD desktop APU, specifically the Ryzen 5 8600G with the Radeon 760M graphics, I was actually very impressed with the overall performance that we were getting out of it. But I wanted to compare it with the previous generation RDNA 2 top of the line iGPU, that being the 680M. So we're going to be taking a look at that specifically in a mini PC. The mini PC we're going to be looking at is the Sur 6 max that has a ryzen 7 7735hs and that of course does have the 680m graphics with a maximum clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz so that is going to be 12 rdna 2 cores going up against the 8 in the 8600g of course those have a maximum clock speed of 2.8 gigahertz so we're going to see if that clock speed bump and the IPC increase of RDNA 3 is actually going to make up for the difference here. There are a few things that we need to point out first, though. One of the main ones being that because of the fact that this is a desktop APU versus a essentially mobile APU that is put into a desktop mini PC, there are going to be some noticeable difference in terms of performance. One of the main things being, of course, that for one, we are very limited in terms of our TDP here. While the 8600G out of the box can end up using TDP as high as 110 watts, that is the maximum that I was actually able to measure from it, the Sur 6 Max actually has a maximum TDP of 55 watts. So we're essentially using half of the power on this APU here. And because of the limited size of the system itself, you really can't adjust that any higher without starting to get into some very hot territory. And do keep in mind that the higher TDP only affects the CPU, it does not affect the iGPU. In almost all cases, these systems are going to be at their maximum clock speed for the iGPU, and that's really what's going to affect the performance the most. That and the other key difference here being that while both of these are DDR5 based systems, we're looking at desktop DDR5 at a clock speed of 6400 megahertz and with XMP timings, which means that it is technically an overclock versus mobile DDR5 that completely sticks to JDEC speed and is capped out at a maximum speed on this specific system at 4800 megahertz. And if you're not familiar with this, the clock speed of your memory is actually going to drastically affect the performance of your APUs. The reason being is that since they don't have any dedicated VRAM of their own, they have to use system RAM for that. So the faster system memory that you have, the better overall performance you're going to get here. One of the biggest limitation with mobile APUs is the fact that you are almost always going to be stuck at JDEC speeds. JDEC being essentially the standard that sets what the minimum timings and clock speeds are going to be for each generation of DDR. And JDEC is essentially just there for a target for OEMs to hit so that motherboard manufacturers and system integrators know what to build their hardware around. Things like XMP and DOCP, which is actually what AMD systems end up using, exists as essentially out-of-the-box overclocks that a lot of the times are supported within the motherboards themselves. So while they're not an official spec, most of the time you should be able to find your system does support it. We're only going to be focusing on the iGPUs. The CPU difference does not matter in this case. It is all about just the iGPU. So let's jump right on into some games. So the first game we're going to be taking a look at is Batman Arkham Knight running at 1080p with the medium graphics settings. And between the two systems, we're already seeing a pretty noticeable difference in overall performance. Specifically going from the Ryzen 7 7735HS to the Ryzen 5 8600G, we actually do see a 15% increase in the overall FPS average. And our 1% lows also see a pretty noticeable 11% increase. Now, both are extremely playable experiences, and you really, realistically, when you actually sit down and play these, you're more than likely not going to be able to tell the difference, but there is a difference there, and if you're trying to hit an above 60 FPS average, the 7735HS at the medium graphics settings does not hit that, and you are going to have to lower a few settings to get there, while the 8600G is actually able to do it. Though, keep in mind, notice the pretty substantial difference in terms of 
of power usage between the two systems. But power usage does not matter as much on desktop systems because you're not running off of a battery. Though in terms of trying to reduce your overall power bill, there is a difference there and the overall performance difference does not really make up for the higher power. Now the next game we're taking a look at is Guardians of the Galaxy. This is running at the lowest settings and we are using FSR at the quality preset. Again, between the two systems, we see some pretty massive differences where our FPS average going again from the 680M to the 760M sees a pretty substantial 26% increase. It's the 1% lows that see the largest gain where we have a 96% increase in overall performance. And more than anything else, I have to imagine that it is the RAM clock speed difference that actually is making up the difference here. And specifically the fact that the RAM on the 8600G just has tighter timings, though we are again using significantly more power. But at least here we see some massive gains to come along with it as well. Now taking a look at Tiny Tina's Wonderland running at the lowest in-game graphic settings and FSR at the quality preset, here we see some modest gains in the overall FPS average with just a 10% increase between the 680M and the 760M. But again, those 1% lows are where we're seeing the biggest gains, where there is a 28% increase in the 1% lows. That means that overall, the 8600G is going to be a significantly smoother gaming experience. And again, I just have to imagine that this is the RAM speed difference, because while our FPS average isn't really improving all that much, it's those 1% lows that are seeing some massive gains. And from previous APU generations on the desktop, the 1% lows are really where you saw the largest uplifts when you started to actually overclock your RAM. Now I also took a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider running at the very high graphics settings and here we also see some pretty massive differences where our FPS average sees a 32% increase going from the 680M to the 760M and of course our 1% lows see a pretty significant 40% increase in overall performance. This is going to be a significantly noticeable uplift in terms of performance where our 1% lows are falling consistently below 30 with the 7735HS, while on the 8600G, we're actually comfortably above 30. That overall is going to feel like a much smoother and overall more pleasant gaming experience. Now, taking a look at Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord running at the medium settings at 1080p, we do actually see far more modest increases in performance, where our FPS average now sees only a 13% increase and our 1% lows see a 15% increase. This is a title that uses the CPU significantly more than most other games out there are going to use it and it does seem like that is what's actually making the difference between the two systems noticeably lower between this and the other games that we've actually taken a look at so far while the improvements are welcome and it does push you to have as close to a 60 fps average as possible considering that both systems can't really hit that target overall both are decent enough experiences to play the game and they don't really seem to be as massive in terms of the overall gains in the one percent low specifically that we've seen in other titles. It seems like that CPU limitation is actually making a noticeable difference here in terms of holding back the 760M from really flexing its muscle here. Even though the IPC difference between the Zen 3 based CPU and the Zen 4 one is pretty significant in this specific title, it doesn't really seem to be making an overall difference. Moving on to a far more recent title though, here we have Assassin's Creed Mirage running at the 1080p medium graphic settings with FSR set to balanced. And when we use these specific settings here, the difference between the two systems is pretty massive. Our FPS average ends up seeing a 23% increase in performance, but it's really those 1% lows that again have the largest gains, where we see a 43% increase in overall performance. And really it makes a substantial difference because the 680M is struggling to even hit a 30 fps average while the 760m is actually able to get not just above 30 but above 40 and overall it's going to feel significantly smoother and it's going to be a far more consistent gaming experience now it should be noted that for both systems i do recommend just setting the automatic resolution scaling with fsr and let the game decide what it needs to do to hit a 60 fps target it's going to give you the best gaming experience on both systems but in general there is a pretty 
massive difference in the overall playing experience and that does mean that if you're using that setting with the 760m you're going to have a higher resolution and overall better image quality but now it's time for both systems to be humbled as we take a look at avatar frontiers of pandora running with the lowest in-game graphic settings and we are using fsr at the lowest quality preset and the performance difference here is while pretty significantly different neither one is actually giving a great gaming experience but the 680m actually catches its first win with having a pretty massive 166 percent increase in the one percent lows in comparison to the 760m but then ends up losing again where the 760m actually has a 28 percent increase in the fps average but neither system is going to give you a playable experience in this specific title even with twice the amount of power being used on the 760m we're just not hitting the performance level that we would need to to actually make this an enjoyable experience and it really is just those one percent lows falling apart now taking a look at far cry 6 running at the ultra graphics settings with fsr set to ultra quality though this is fsr 1 so the quality isn't spectacular but at ultra quality it doesn't affect the visuals as much but the difference between the two systems here is again pretty significant where our fps average sees a 25 percent increase but again the biggest gains are in those one percent lows where we see a 28 percent increase in overall performance and again that pushes us to just a slightly above 30 fps gaming experience for the one percent lows up to one percent lows that are above 40. so overall you're going to have a significantly smoother gaming experience and for a game that could be as chaotic as far cry that can make a pretty massive difference in terms of the overall gameplay another title that really seems to humble both of these systems is returnal running at the lowest in-game graphics settings with fsr set to the performance preset neither system really gives us that playable of a gaming experience at least one that i think would be enjoyable for most people considering how much we have to sacrifice in terms of the visual quality here but there are still some massive gains to be had here where our fps average does see a 21 percent increase in overall performance while our one percent lows see a 20 percent increase so not the largest gains that we've seen but considering the fact that this is already a pretty rough gaming experience seeing that big of an uplift is going to make things far more enjoyable for you if you're really really desperate to play this game our one percent lows being one frame below that 30 target that we're going for for one percent lows at a bare minimum as opposed to the one percent lows of 24 where those are noticeably below 30 is going to feel significantly different but again neither one is really going to be that great of a gaming experience because we had to sacrifice so much visually we could go even lower with setting FSR to the ultra performance preset, but visually speaking, that's going to be an absolute disaster over what we already have here that isn't exactly great to look at. It probably does not translate well onto YouTube, but trust me, this looks really, really rough, especially with all of these particles that end up having just significant shimmering at the edges. Not exactly a fun gaming experience. Now, a title that has been around for a very long time and at this point is almost a decade old but still brings system to their knees here we have deus ex mankind divided running at the medium graphic settings and both systems seem to be struggling to give us a great level of performance here specifically in those one percent lows but we again see some pretty massive increases where at the one percent lows we see a 28 percent increase between the two systems here and our fps average also sees a 30 30% increase but for a game that's this old it's kind of surprising to see that systems that are this modern and in theory this powerful considering that they were both running Far Cry 6 at the ultra graphic settings with just setting FSR to ultra quality this is really a massive massive overall difference in terms of performance where neither system is even hitting a 50 FPS average though the 680M can't even hit a 40 FPS average but one of the big advantages advantages of the 8600G is that since it has an RDNA 3 based iGPU you could turn on frame generation within the driver settings to improve the overall feel of the game. Though the gains there are pretty dubious if you ask me but 
for some people they really seem to like the feel of frame generation to me i just don't really notice much of a difference but for other people they really seem to just claim it makes a massive difference in the overall playability of games so that's really up to you to be able to test but that feature is just not available on the 680m and the last title that we're taking a look at is of course rainbow six siege running here now keep in mind that the 760m says that this is running on direct x 12 that is not accurate the game itself does not run on direct x 12 it is only direct x 11 and vulcan and that is running with vulcan i just don't understand why it was being identified as direct x 12 but both of these are running on vulcan and we are at the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using fsr at the quality preset but while both of these systems are giving some fantastic levels of performance and are both going to let you use some high refresh rate displays there's still a 30 percent increase in our overall fps average and a 26 percent increase in one percent lows and the fact that our one percent lows now go into the triple digits does mean that this is actually going to be a extremely smooth gaming experience if you're using a high refresh rate display especially one that supports free sync so again while both systems are able to play this game really really well the gains cannot be understated so after taking a look at that selection of titles and the performance difference what is the conclusion here well the 8600g on the desktop is actually extremely extremely ex impressive the most impressive aspect is really just the fact that even though we have fewer cores going from 12 down to 8 the clock speed difference in both the igpu and the system ram as well as the tighter timings overall means that we are seeing some pretty incredible gains across the board where at a minimum we're still looking at around a 10 to 15 percent increase and at the high end sometimes going all the way up to 40 percent increases in performance now it should be noted that we are on a system now that is using twice as much power to give us that 15 to 40 percent increase in performance whether or not that matters to you is really for you to decide and this is of course not even accounting for the fact that we are talking about a six core cpu versus an eight core though there is a generational difference in terms of the overall architecture but if you're looking to just make a system that is gaming orientated and you are thinking about picking up these desktop apus i hope that this gives you at least some comfort in knowing that there are going to be some pretty significant gains and now i'm very curious to see what the difference between this ryzen 7 7735hs would be versus the 8700g since now we're looking at a 12 core versus a 12 core so we could see what the overall generational difference is as well as the fact that what difference does having a desktop apu actually make it should be noted that there was never a desktop apu released with this 680m so if you're curious why i use this as a comparison point it is well because one, I have a lot of mini PCs around here, and also because this is really the only way to actually test a 680M. Now, AMD does recommend that you just go with 6,000 megahertz RAM. That's pretty much what they say is the sweet spot, while I went with 64. And I will say that it was kind of a pain to get this to work on this specific system. It wasn't until I actually swapped out the motherboard for a completely different one and updated it to the most recent BIOS that I was actually able to get this to be stable and pass the mem test after letting it sit there running for about two days. So I'm pretty confident that the system is stable now, but it was a pain to get there as opposed to the Sur 6 Max that all I had to do was just open the box, plug it in, and it worked at its intended speed. But if you are in the DIY market and are looking to set up your own system, while you might end up spending more money to make a small system with the 8600G, you can at least confidently know that the performance that you're going to get out of it is going to be pretty significant in comparison to at least RDNA 2 based desktop mini PCs that have been coming down in price pretty significantly. You can usually find systems like this at around the $400 mark, while to make a ITX system that is going to give you the ability to put the 8600G in there, you're looking at really a lot more like at the low end around 600 to realistically if you're not going to be going with deals and used parts more around the seven to eight hundred dollar range it honestly really just comes down to what you consider to be your priority here if you're someone that is looking to just pick up a system plug it in and get it up and running instantly these mini pcs are still a fantastic deal but because of the fact that you are sacrificing upgradability or size you are also going to be limited with the type of ram that you can use and that's going to affect 
affect the overall performance. We will next be testing out a system that actually is in the same CPU generation, so a Zen 4 versus Zen 4, and that's going to be with the 7840HS that is in the Minisform Mini PC that I absolutely love, the UM780 XTX. So that is going to be an RDNA 3 based APU with 12 cores versus the 8 RDNA 3 that we have here. So let's see if the desktop version is actually able to top that as well. But anyways, I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, let me know down below. I'm curious what you think and which one of these two systems you would consider picking up yourself. I'll catch you guys in the next one.